to DC Today. It is uh, Wednesday, October the 4th. Brian Seitel, good to be with you again here today. And for once, actually, for a nice change, we had uh, an up market. So we had a good day in, in, in markets. Not amazingly good, but we'll take it. The Dow was up about 127 points on the day. Um, NASDAQ was up about 0.8%. And then the NASDAQ was up 1.3. S&P was up 0.8. So fairly uh, a strong session, which is nice to see. Yields came off a little bit today. We actually, overnight at least, though, we had some high prints on 10s and 30s. 10s printed 488 overnight. We closed at uh, 474 on the day. So they came down a little bit on the day, but uh, that was that was a higher number than we've seen in quite a while. And uh, 30-year bonds actually went over 5%. Hasn't, haven't seen that since 2007. So that was uh, intranight. Then we got some economic data today that um, cooled things down a little bit. You know, rates really had been on a tear. And for a long time, rates had, or longer term rates, had been moving higher because GDP was being revised up. And frankly, growth expectations were coming in ahead of expectations. And and that's those are good things. That's not necessarily a real bad reason to have long-term interest rates go up. But that's sort of decoupled a little at this point. I really do think part of it is because of deficit spending, um, interest expense moving higher, and I'll sort of go into the, some of these some of these factors. I wrote about it or, or talked about it on Wednesday of last week, and uh, or sorry, Thursday, and I know David spoke a little bit about it on Monday, so I don't want to go over it too much. But um, last night, um, Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, was uh, removed from office, first time in history, by the Republican Party. So pretty unprecedented. And it was sort of the, the farther right, I guess, if that's a term, of the GOP, um, you know, wanting spending cuts and wanting a certain bill get passed through Congress on the debt ceiling in order to keep the government open. They didn't get that. And so here we are. There's an interim Fed president, and then they'll vote. And put someone else um, in there, most likely Scalise, so long as he's healthy. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But all these things do matter as far as um, you know interest rates. And so we're seeing long end rates go up. Um, we saw today ADP, which is a private payrolls number, come in far lower than expected. It was eighty nine thousand uh, private payrolls were added. We were expecting about one hundred and forty thousand. So big miss. And it's in contrast to what we saw in the job openings number yesterday. Um, which wasn't just because TBG has listed several new job openings, of course, but nonetheless, um, kind of a counterintuitive or conflicting data when you have one number saying that there's more, far more jobs that are posted being open than expected. And then the next day you get a payroll number that's far, you know, almost half of what was expected. So I just think there's some cyclicality to when those numbers sort of get correlated in there. Um, Friday, we will have the official non-farm payroll number, which will be heavily anticipated. And we're expecting something around 160,000 for the month. But the jobs number coming in a little bit lower was was bad news, but you know, good news for markets. Um, kind of gives the uh, the rates are, are going to stick where they are narrative uh, a little bit more juice to it. One thing of note lately I've seen is we talked about uh, a slowing Chinese economy um, a few times in this podcast, and because of that, and for other reasons, political reasons, there's less Chinese demand for U.S. treasuries. And you can see a chart. I don't have it up here, but but you can imagine it. There's a correlation between the demand of China from our treasury bonds and the currency, the yuan. And you can just see as their demand for treasuries has gone lower and their holdings of treasuries have gone lower, so is the, the currency. The strength of the currency is, is depreciating along with the, the removal of that tether. Um, and... Uh, but, you know, the, I wrote that I was skeptical on, on Fed. You know, there, there's right now we're running uh, an interest expense of 14 percent of tax revenues, not of GDP. 14 percent of tax revenues is going to service the debt uh, because interest rates have, have doubled or tripled from where they were. And um, if you look at a chart of interest expense and, say, national defense spending, um, we're not spending as much on interest payments yet as we are on national defense, but the two charts are looking like they're going to converge at some point. So, so my point is just when the Fed says they're going to stay longer, higher on interest rates, there's a lot of monetary uh, uh, monetary tightening that has been done recently without the Fed doing anything. Yes, they're selling and letting bonds run off of the balance sheet. So you've got quantitative tightening happening. And yes, they've risen uh, increased short term rates. But aside from that, just financial conditions, you know, interest expense on mortgages, on credit cards, the economy is slowing a little bit. And you're seeing that in some jobs data 
and I think uh, it'd be pretty silly for them to to go ahead and move move again on interest rates, but we'll see. So I'm skeptical there. The deficits, again, hand in hand with higher long term rates, deficit spending um, are now seven percent of GDP. So we haven't had that historically almost ever outside of wartime, and uh, it's when we have full employment. So these aren't 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 necessarily really uh, not real good things to go through today, but. Uh, some positive light, which is markets are up. And then the ISM services data we got today was better than expected. It was actually in line, um, but expansionary. We're at 53.6. Um, manufacturing was a little lower uh, last uh, or on Monday, I guess, in contraction territory. But services is like 78% of the economy. So it just trumps what, what the slowness in manufacturing is. Um, there was a... Uh, some news um, out. I don't. Uh, it, it isn't uh, official yet, but it's looking more likely that there'll be a strike um, from Kaiser Permanente with seventy-five thousand of their healthcare employees, as we uh, or as they're they're having some of their talks sort of stall on their negotiations on prices, which is unfortunate. And then we still have the UAW strike ongoing. GM was able to raise about six billion dollars in a credit line uh, to help them fund operations in the meantime. So I'll leave it there. I know that was a whole lot to chew through in in one sitting here, but I appreciate you reading. Appreciate you listening. As always, tomorrow we've got jobless claims and um, some deficit data to go through. And um, and then David will be back with you tomorrow on DC Today. We'll have Dividend Cafe in your inboxes, as always, on Friday. And um, and and I'll send you off to your weekend if I don't hear from you. Send questions. I'd uh, love to hear from you anytime. And with that, I'll wish you a good evening. Thank you. Mm-hmm.